Electronic Fetal Heart Rate Monitoring, Interpretation and Management. In this lecture, we are going to cover the abnormal fetal heart rate pattern in the CTG. Remember that teamwork is our sole rule in practice. In labor room, in obstetric gynecology, and in medicine. There are many factors affecting the fetal heart rate. One of these factors is the fetal hemorrhage, which will lead to the hypovolemia. In fetal bleeding can occur primary or secondary to trauma, like needle or abruptual placenta or blunt injury. The fetal heart responds related to the rate and the amount of bleeding. If the fetal bleeding is less than 5%, the fetal heart rate tracing is normal. But if the bleeding is more than 5% and less than 20% and it's chronic, this is allowing for the compensatory mechanism to develop and there will be no change in the fetal heart rate tracing. In acute blood loss more than 5% and less than 20%, hypovolemia will develop. And this will result in stimulating the baroreceptor and stretch receptor in the atrium due to the drop in the blood pressure. Stimulation of the baroreceptor and the stretch receptor will stimulate the cardioregulatory center in the brain. And this is will lead to increase the sympathetic and reduce the parasympathetic. We know the effect of the, of the sympathetic on the variability. So there will be increase in the variability and diminished movement and acceleration. Fetal heart rate tachycardia may develop. If the bleeding more than 20%, there will be generalized vasoconstriction conserving the blood for the vital organ, the brain, the heart, the adrenal and the fetal tachycardia will be more than 200 beat per minute. Saltatory fetal heart rate pattern will be there. And when we talk about saltatory fetal heart rate pattern, we are talking about oscillation of fetal heart rate more than 25 beat per minute with absence of both short and long term variability. If the bleeding more than 50%, this is will lead to more generalized vasoconstriction, a fixed baseline tachycardia more than 200 beat per minute, and this is will lead to absence of long-term and short-term variability. And this is what we call the sinusoidal pattern. When we are talking about acute and chronic hypoxia, we will explain about the sinusoidal pattern more. Sinusoidal pattern is a smooth fixed market tachycardia or slow 3 to 6 oscillation per minute. What is sinusoidal fetal heart rate pattern? The sinusoidal fetal heart rate pattern describes a regular oscillation of baseline that resembling the sine wave. It is a smooth undulating pattern lasting for at least 10 minutes with a frequency of 3 to 5 cycles per minute and amplitude of 5 to 15 beat per minute above and below the baseline. Baseline variability is absent and the sinus waveform may be confused with a good baseline variability. Sinusoidal fetal heart rate pattern can be physiological like when there is a thumb sucking by the fetus or pathological when there is a severe fetal anemia. The exact pathophysiology behind the generation of this pattern is not fully understood. But if you get a baby in the labor room and you find that there is a sinusoidal fetal heart rate pattern, what you can do to differentiate in between physiological and pathological one? Fetal stimulation by digital pressure or by vaginal examination, vibroacoustic stimulation will awake the baby if he's sleeping and this is will result in an acceleration and in the, the fetal heart rate will go back to the normal form. What are the causes of fetal heart rate tachycardia? 
Fetal heart rate tachycardia will be divided into suspicious tachycardia, where is the fetal, fetal heart rate between 150 to 170, or pathological pattern when it's more than 170. Fetal heart rate tachycardia can be caused by fetal hypoxia, like early sign of hypoxia, medication like turbitaline, prematurity, maternal anxiety, maternal fever, Epidural can cause maternal fever, which can lead to the fetal tachycardia. Fetal infection and chorionitis can lead to the fetal tachycardia. Fetal movement and stimulation be benign cause of fetal tachycardia. If tachycardia is between 160 and 180 beat per minute, where acceleration are present and no other adverse feature appear, shouldn't be regarded as suspicious. But if there is increase in the baseline heart rate, even within the normal range, with other non-reassuring or abnormal feature, should be increased the concern. What are the causes of fetal heart rate bradycardia? Fetal heart rate bradycardia can be caused by many factors. Fetal hypoxia is one of the causes. But remember that bradycardia is the late sign of fetal hypoxia. Medication like narcotic can cause bradycardia. Epidural analgesia can affect it due to the two important factors, either due to the increase in the incidence of the maternal hypotension which causes bradycardia, or due to the medication effects which, which start by 5 minutes and can be lasting for 10 minutes or more. Synthetic oxytocin causing a hyperstimulation of the uterine contraction, and this is can cause bradycardia. Maternal hypotension due to the patient lying down on her back for a long time. Prolapse of umbilical cord or prolong prolonged compressions of umbilical cord. If a bradycardia occurs more than three minutes, if the fetal heart rate has not recovered by nine minutes, so urgent preparation should be made to urgently accelerate the birth of the baby. If the fetus heart rate recovers within 9 minutes, the decision to delivery should be reconsidered and re-evaluation of the case with counseling of the mother should be the appropriate approach. Fetal heart rate variability. Do you remember when we talk in the pathophysiological lecture about the long-term variability, which is 5 to 15 over 1 minute, and the short-term variability, which is 2 to 4 heartbeat over 1 to 2 seconds? We said that the sympathetic is the dominant, and the sympathetic causes fetal tachycardia. Whenever there is a stimulation of parasympathetic and the vagal stimulation, this is will result in the reduce of the fetal heart rate. And whenever there is reduction of the vagal stimuli, this is, will lead back to the dominancy of the sympathetic, which is increasing the fetal heart rate. Fetal heart rate variability. Long-term variability can be divided into the following category. Decrease the long-term variability, which can be due to benign cause like sleep-awake cycle, if it is for 40 minutes, and can be due to the chronic fetal hypoxia, which is pathological cause. Moderate variability, like normal variability, 6 to 25 beat per minute. There is market variability, which we explain it, we call it saltatory variability, if it is more than 25 beat per minute. What can cause decreased variability? Decreased variability may occur in the following situation. Hypoxia and acidosis, nervous system depression from medication, prematurity, fetal sleep. Decreased variability is especially ominous if it's associated with late persistence deceleration or repeated severe prolonged variable deceleration. Prolonged use of maternal facial oxygen therapy may be harmful to the baby and should be avoided. And there is no research evidence evaluating the benefit or risk associated with the short-term use 
of maternal facial therapy in cases of suspected fetal compromise. In the presence of abnormal fetal heart rate pattern and uterine hypercontractility, not secondary to oxytocin infusion, tocolysis should be considered. In cases suspected or confirmed acute fetal compromise, delivery should be accomplished within a time appropriate for the clinical condition. What caused the early deceleration? Early deceleration are not a sign of fetal problem. Early deceleration occur most frequently in the following clinical situation. During vaginal examination, in second stage of labor during pushing, during application of internal fetal heart rate electrode with cephalopelvic disproportion, after amniotic sac has ruptured, and with vertex presentation. So early deceleration are rare, less than 5% of all the deceleration. Uniform in size, shape, and duration. Generally, only seen in the late first or second stage of labor. They are a mirror image of the contraction. In early deceleration, there will be normal circulation. So, note that the onset of the deceleration occurs simultaneously with the onset of the contraction, and there is no lag time. At the asym of the contraction, when the pressure against the fetal head is the greatest, the deceleration reach it is nadir, thus again no lag time is present. As the contraction wanes, less pressure is exerted against the fetal heart rate and fetal heart rate beginning to return to the baseline level. At the cessation of the contraction, fetal heart rate has returned to the pre-deceleration rate and thus no lag time is present between the end of the contraction and the end of the deceleration. If you want to understand why variable deceleration occur and how it's occur, we have to remember that normal fetal circulation the cardiovascular response to the core compression vary according to the vessels compressed, the degree and the duration of the compression, the gestational age of the fetus, and the condition immediately prior to the episode. 50% of total blood volume is sequestered in the placenta. And 50% of the combined ventricular cardiac output goes to the placenta via the two umbilical artery and vein. The late deceleration are transitory decrease in the heart rate caused by uteroplacental insufficiency. A compromised blood flow to the baby that doesn't deliver the amount of oxygen need to withstand the stress of labor. So persistent late deceleration are ominous, especially if the deceleration are associated with a loss of short-term variability. So late deceleration account for about 5% of deceleration. Remember, the other 5% is the early deceleration. Are reductions in the fetal heart rate of more than 15 beats per minute from the baseline for 15 second duration? Comments after the contraction start and end after the contraction has end. Must be uniform in both length and depth. To understand the late deceleration, we know that the blood enters the placenta during resting stage and the blood perfusing the fetus. So during the ascending limb of the contraction, there is no diminished perfusion occur and no change in the CTG. But during the descending limb of the contraction, the fetus receives diminished blood supply and therefore the deceleration begin at this time. As you note that the nadir of the deceleration typically occur near the end of the contraction 
and that the fetal heart rate does not return to the baseline level until at least 15 seconds after the contraction has ended. And the uterus has returned to the resting phase and the fetoplacental perfusion has returned to normal. We will talk now about late deceleration. How late deceleration occur? What is the pathophysiology of late deceleration? Before we proceed for the late deceleration process, we will remember that the oxygenated blood will enter to the uterus through the uterine artery to the spiral artery and this is during the resting phase between the uterine contraction. The blood perfusion will be normal and the blood will enter to the placenta. There is a difference between artery and vein. The vein, they are more elastic, so there will be the first to be compressed. So during uterine contraction, blockage of the venous drainage of the intervillous space, but arterial perfusion persists to be high, and this is, will lead to high oxygen concentration. When the contraction persists and increase, this is will result in the compression of the artery an arterial perfusion sees of the intervillous space. Oxygen concentration will fall down for 25% and more and this is will lead to hypoxia. When the hypoxia develop, the baroreceptor will be stimulated and as a result of baroreceptor stimulation, the cardioregulatory center in the brain will be stimulated and this will lead to generalized vasoconstriction conserving the blood for the vital organ, which is the heart, the adrenal, and brain. Cardioregulatory center in the brain will send impulses through the vagal afferent parasympathetic, which lead to the drop in the fetal heart rate, as well as sympathetic impulses will be sent, which lead to increased variability during and after the deceleration. So the delay time between the ASIM of the contraction and the beginning of the late deceleration is gradually shortened with the severity of hypoxia. What that mean? That mean if the hypoxia is getting severe and deteriorated, then the deceleration will get nearer and nearer to the ASIM of the contraction because there will be no retroplacental reserve. If the fetal hypoxia increase for less than 75% but more than 50%, this will lead to fetal tachycardia and decrease in the long-term variability and reflex late deceleration with decreased amplitude. So if the fetal asphyxia develop and the hypoxia oxygen fall below 50%, metabolic acidosis develop what will happen? At this stage, central nervous system reflex disappear, result in the indirect smooth late deceleration due to the direct myocardial depression due to the hypoxemia. So there will be no more central nervous system effect. A smooth heart rate, absent late deceleration, and large deceleration, bradycardia, and fetal death. During the fetal death, what we are getting, we are getting deoxygenated blood and we can hear the placental shuffle, but there is no fetal heart rate. Variable deceleration. Variable deceleration as transitory decrease in the fetal heart rate caused as reflex response elicited by umbilical cord compression or stretch. 50% of all monitored babies experience variable deceleration during labor. Variable deceleration account for the majority of the deceleration seen, which is more than 90%. They are reduction in the fetal heart rate of more than 15 beat per minute from the baseline for 15 seconds that vary in length and amplitude and are not uniform. So now we know that 5% due to the heat compression, which is early deceleration, 
5% due to the placental insufficiency which is, which is late deceleration and 90% is due to the variable deceleration which is the cord compression. So the majority of the deceleration is variable deceleration. Remember that while we are going for the workshop. The reflex response in variable deceleration have three components. Early phase, deceleration phase, and late acceleration phase. The blood will enter to the fetus through the umbilical vein. The umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood, whereas the umbilical artery is carrying the deoxygenated blood back to the placenta. What happens when there is umbilical cord compression? The first to be compressed is the umbilical vein. We know that the umbilical vein carries oxygenated blood from the placenta toward the right uh, side of the heart. So whenever there is occlusion of the umbilical vein, this is will lead to the atrial pressure falling down and this is will stimulate the volume receptor in the atrium. When the volume receptor in the atrium is stimulated, it will send impulses to the cardioregulatory center, which will stimulate the sympathetic impulses toward the SA node. And this is lead to increase the long-term variability 15 to 30 beat per minute during the deceleration. If the contraction persists and continue, the umbilical artery will be compressed. We know that the umbilical artery carry the deoxygenated blood from the fetus toward the placenta. Obstruction in the uterine artery led to the, acu to the acute hypertension. Acute hypertension will stimulate the systematic baroreceptor. And systematic baroreceptor will affect the cardioregulatory center in the brain sending through a vagus parasympathetic impulses to the SA node which lead to drop in the fetal heart rate. Whenever the cord compression will be released, the first thing to be released is the artery and this is will lead to the systemic hypertension no longer exists and the midbrain baroreceptor are deactivated. Therefore, fetal heart rate rapidly returned to the baseline. The vagal effect will be reduced, so the dominant sympathetic will be led to increase in the long-term variability, which is the post-deceleration acceleration. We are back to the normal circulation, where both artery and vein is normal, and the CTG will go back to it is normal variability and normal heart rate. When we classify the CTG, we talk about reassuring variable deceleration not associated with poor fetal outcome. And what is this reassuring variable deceleration? Baseline fetal heart rate remains stable, the variability remains good, and mild variable deceleration less than 30 seconds in duration with rapid return to the baseline. When we are talking about the non-reassuring variable deceleration, they indicate possible compromise, and this is, can be due to prolonged variable or persistence variable deceleration, rising the baseline heart rate, fetal tachycardia, reducing baseline variability, presence of the post-deceleration smooth overshoot, and loss of pre- and post-deceleration shouldering, and deceleration more than 60 beat for duration more than 60 seconds. As we explained that the variable deceleration, they are not related to the uterine contraction, but they mean that the umbilical cord is compressed. They may be V or U shape. Different type with shape of variable deceleration. Some of them, they are benign, like normal shouldering, and overshoot shouldering pre-pathological, whereas some of them pathological, like loss of shouldering, smoothing act through, late recovery, and biphasic deceleration. 
during hypertonus contraction, when the persistent uterine contraction continue, this will lead to decreased myometrial perfusion and diminished fetal placenta circulation, which lead to the fetal heart rate abnormality and late and prolonged deceleration. If you look to the CTG, from the beginning we can elicit and we can see how many contractions in 10 minutes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 contractions within 10 minutes. The fetal heart rate is normal, it's 140 beat per minute, with good beat to beat variability. But what happened when the contraction, the patient started in Sintu and the patient is having tetanic uterine contraction, look to what happened. There is a period of bradycardia following by variable deceleration. We will see a lot of these cases in the workshop and we, know how, we will learn how to manage it.